So today I am talking to Fatma, another one of our Canadian Control tutors. So hello, Fatma. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Lincoln. Thank you for having me in this podcast and uh, for everybody who is listening to us now. Hello, everyone. Perfect. That's very, very kind. So thank you. Um, and thank you for joining. So we're going to talk a little bit about your sort of journey through becoming initially a physio, a physiotherapist, and then your development as a tutor, teacher of movement related content and other things, and how you got involved with kinetic control, and what you're looking to do sort of next over the next year and, and where things are going. So there's some of the topics we're going to be considering. Um, so let's go back to that sort of first part of the journey then. Why, why did you become a physical therapist? Why did you become a physio? Oh, wow. That was a very long time ago. But I became a physiotherapist uh, by coincidence, actually. Yeah, I wanted to become a physician, a cardiologist. But then it happened that I joined the School of Physiotherapy. And then, uh, said, then I was looking for something like a speciality to be involved in, in the physiotherapy field itself. And after a while, I can say maybe two years after graduation or so, I felt in love with the physical therapy field itself. What I like the most about is that we never go invasive. We help a lot of people to have better quality of life. We see our patients uh, often. It's not just about once. It's not like surgery when you see people where, uh, when they are sedated. So it's a, a, a lively uh, profession. And here I am. All right. So that's you sort of going down one route initially and then found uh, physical therapy and sort of grew to uh, fall in love with that. And that's sort of what you're describing there, that sort of uh, impact on quality of life that's really immediate. And also um, you have lots of interaction with particular patients over time. So I can see, yeah, that that's very different to maybe where it could have gone. Um, so, yeah, not, not a lot of sedation going on with this. Uh, we need people to be very alive, don't we? So uh, very different. OK. Um, yeah, we do. Yeah. So then in um, with respect to the education process, um, now we do quite a lot of, um, I guess, we deliver a lot of retraining um, exercise. We deliver quite a lot of exercise within what we do um, when we work with individuals. How much of that was there within what you did within your university when you were sort of undergraduate? Uh, I got graduated in 2008 and by that time there was no like um, special interest in exercise or focusing uh, on using exercises even in the profession itself. Um, it was more of using electrophysical agent, it was more of later on hands on but exercises was something like maybe you can give the patient a sheet of exercise they may be doing at home and that's it uh, okay. so uh, that was by that time but now we know it's highly different i would say okay so um some modalities um manual therapy and maybe then some sort of um some sort of guidance in terms of you describing a, a piece of paper with some exercise on it that you could sort of follow at home, but not really supervised, not really specific to the individual. I guess certainly what we're doing now, very, very different then. OK. Now, having graduated, what was that first role like? How do you sort of get into, involved in that first sort of job as a, as a physio? Um, it was in pharma training in musculoskeletal field. My intention was first to be a pediatric specialist, but then I changed my mind. And I was going to different private uh, places or either my internship just to observing what other therapist was doing. And that was initially an issue for me because uh, a lot of things were uh, in form of managing patients through electrophysical agents, doing some cracking and that's it. And never using an exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, and that gap really increased when I became a Pilates uh, certified instructor even. So uh, that was a big gap between what I was seeing in different practice and between what I wanted to do uh, primarily with myself because uh, I had a low back pain myself. Okay. And yeah. the only thing that really worked for me was 
going into Pilates sessions. That's why I became an instructor later. Um, but now, again, things are getting better. Yeah. Okay, so um, um, leaving, um, I guess, the formal education, you talked about what was in the in that physical therapy degree, and then you're sort of um, getting involved with also Pilates. Now, what year? Because you mentioned sort of 2008 when you were doing the the undergrad um, uh, course. What sort of year did you get involved with Pilates? What, how long was that after? Uh, that was after my graduation when I started joining a private practice and I started to do a lot of mobilizations for the patient. Then I started to have a low back pain. I used to train every day in the gym. But after that, I wasn't able at all to do that because of the low back pain and the radiation later. Okay. So I was consistent and resistant to look for something that may make me feel better. Even the mobilizations I used to do for my patient weren't working for me at all. So I tried everything like uh, CrossFit, Zumba, yoga, but Pilates really made a difference. Okay. And that's why I really thought about joining this school to know better or maybe to help my patient combining this to whatever I was doing by that time. All right. Uh, so we we had a, a range of approaches available to us. We had the, the, the more traditional physical therapy interventions. We also, um, for your own sort of low back pain, you were describing how you tried a number of different exercise modalities. And also you were finding that the only thing that was really making a difference was Pilates. Okay. Um, so, um, exercise, but exercise of a certain type. So not just exercise per se. Okay. Now, alongside this and somewhere along the line, you got involved in teaching and also I need to mention Mahmood, of course, and Prime Physio. So at what point did that happen? Actually, it started in 2008, not becoming a tutor, but to, to get to know Mahmoud Saad and Prime Physio, they were the only provider for continuous education in Egypt by that time. And I heard about a free lecture for a Syriac concept. And then when I attended, they uh, advertised for the course coming after. And in a study, I joined because I was looking for something different to whatever I was exposed to in the undergraduate level. Right. Then I continued my journey with Prime Physio for a few years, attending courses, different schools, but mostly by the time where manual therapy, like focusing. And then I traveled for some time and then went back to or get back to Egypt where I do my own practice now and where I do live. And then I started to uh, join Prime Physio as an assistant tutor. And then I finished my uh, uh, my training. Um, it was um, the, the training of trainer and the presentation skills and all of that. Then I uh, joined Prime Physio as a senior tutor officially in 2017. Yeah, that was one year before I attended the climate control courses. Okay, so... Nice, nice segue into where we're going to go next in a moment there, mentioning kinetic control. So from 2008, getting involved as a um, attendee of courses, been exposed to that content through Prime Physio. And then in 2017, so nearly a decade later, getting to that point of now delivery of courses. So yeah. and by that time, of course, you've got extensive clinical mileage to talk about on the um, on the course themselves. So you can talk about how you're using this content in real life with real patients. So brilliant. Now, you yes, mentioned exactly. kinetic control. So, um, 2018 then, um, tell me a little about that first exposure to kinetic control in 2018. Um, actually, I remember just a few months before the first uh, OMTA International Manual Therapy Congress, me and uh, Mahmoud were in a meeting with Sarah Matram. And uh, I got to know her better even after the meeting because I started to Google about the kind of control and what kind of things that concept is talking about, which is uh, more uh, of what I was looking for. So um, I did a meeting with Sarah and then she was supposed to uh, be in Egypt for in the first uh, 
international congress, but then we had uh, Pablo. Uh, so I attended the first courses with Pablo. I met Pablo, and then I met Sarah herself in on her uh, first visit to Egypt and the second line of courses of the kind of control. Then it was Jacqueline uh, first in Jordan, yeah, when we were in Jordan. And then I met Beata, Mark online, of course, and then yourself online also. So I would say I was privileged to listen to this uh, concept, which focuses on a specific kind of exercise, which is a motor control retraining. And what is really helping us as physiotherapists from different points of views uh, for tutors and clinicians who treat different types of patient sports related or uh, musculoskeletal or uh, with different even experiences level. So extensive exposure to the um, tutor team and um, both in person and online. Um, and again, as a uh, somebody coming through as a um, an attendee of courses and then starting to get involved in the in the process of becoming a tutor to where we are now. Um, and I can see as well that um, where you were, the things you highlighted within your undergrad, so you, maybe what was missing, then when you went looking for Pilates, that was helping with your own back pain. And then maybe what kind of control could offer was that systemized way to apply those things within that, that framework that KC is. Okay. And when did you decide to think, oh, by the way, I want to start teaching kinetic control? I mean, because it's one thing to go to courses, but it's another thing again to start thinking, I'm going to teach this stuff because, yeah, it's quite fiddly. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. So um, the first, it, it goes back to the first courses I ever attended with the McKinsey courses. And the things I liked about this is to have a, a whole framework for assessment treatment and a big bunch of evidence behind. So I was always looking for a training that fits this criteria. And I had a lot of training in different manual therapy schools, but never had this criteria to met. And then when I started to attend the kinetic control courses, that was, yeah, that's it. And evidence clinical reason framework. We use it for assessment, not just the treatment. We can follow up patient and we can integrate it with the different strategies and tools that we use for our patient. And we had this mission, me, Mahmoud and Heba, to um, like join the, any school that is, I, I would say worthy, worthy in terms of like had this history and this uh, like uh, rule in assessing anti treatment and become tutor to help physiotherapists in the Middle East primarily because it was a, a gap really um, we would say time uh, not time gap like uh, countries were far away from each other even economic gap so um, I never from going from one school to another to different school. The first one I really thought about joining as a tutor and the, uh, the committee and team, Sarah and Mark, were very helpful and supportive where the kind of the control. Uh, so after, yeah, after attending the courses, we started talking and we had a plan and it all went very well after that. Now you're one of the individuals that went through the uh the teacher development plan during 2020 and 2021. So it's incredibly tough because- COVID time. Exactly. So all we had yeah. then was um, the ability to shadow courses, to see things virtually. It's a really difficult way to do this. And also you, you did all your um, uh, assessments uh, virtually, mm -hmm. your exam was done in this way. So um, how was that as a, <laughs> I mean, you've got nothing to compare it against, but how was that as something to go through? I would say it's one of the things that you think at the beginning, why everything is like messed up, but then it turns out to be the best thing that happened by the time. So we had a different plan. Me was having my final training with Cohen. He was coming to Egypt giving courses, but then COVID uh, time like everywhere. 
and I was supposed to fly to UK to have the rest of my training and examination uh, testing and so on. Um, there was no flying anymore, and you know all about that. But surprisingly, uh, you set a different plan, which turned out to be working very well. So we had support, we had all the time because there was no much of work happening by that time. So we had all the time for virtual training. It was a new interesting thing by then. And then even the exam, when uh, it we did it like earlier than it was supposed to be, I thought I wasn't ready for it. But sometimes when you put yourself on the spot under pressure, you find yourself, no, I'm ready, it will just I was afraid to do that. And then it didn't just stop at that. I had all the support I needed after starting to deliver courses on my own in Egypt. And I think what happened also supported me because otherwise people would say, why you stopped to have uh, tutors flying out to Egypt? But now it was that situation and that's how we can help. And people really saw uh, that training, good training, clinical experience, people working on themselves to high, higher level uh, or towards a bigger aim can really make it. Uh, I, I cannot say the same, but I, I would say we are making that uh, difference now in the area we promote the courses in. Probably um, as, as somebody extends that, um, I think for both yourself and uh, Heba coming through was we were very aware that you're already good teachers. So that made it, I think, a lot easier. I think because you had that experience of delivery, it was now more just about the content rather than how to teach because you already had that. So I yeah. think that was one thing really in your favour really, really helped us at that point. So that then took us into the point where you're now qualified, you are a KCAT, you can go and start teaching courses. So again, a little bit about how that, that first sort of um, delivery of kinetic control was for you as a tutor. So how was that first course? Uh, nobody, I would say nobody noticed, but it was, um, <laughs> yeah, it was like first time teaching, actually. I remember that. So it's like out of pressure. I was afraid to be judged and be able to compare me to another tutors. Uh, that was all what is going inside my head. But my intentions was I would the level would be the same. Uh, I had been fully aware of the rule of the cognitive control, how it can help the patient, how it can help the therapist. I have other tools to use. Plus, as you said, my experience in teaching. So I was really trying to focus on this. And uh, surprisingly, it went very well because of one extra thing, which is the language barrier. We, I was in Egypt. And uh, even here, like, even we, we do uh, study physio in Egypt in, in English. But when you use like familiar uh, language, doing discussion with the people and making jokes and making it a bit friendly, but yet professional, it makes a difference. And I think that's one thing we managed to add to the concept and the courses in Egypt. Right. So you had that, the ability to connect with the, um, the attendees of the course more easily, perhaps, than somebody flying in. Yeah, I understand that. I appreciate that. Um, now, it's been a while then since that first course. So, I mean, what, 2023 now? So when was that first course? It was in 20, August 2020. Yeah. Right. So we're sort of three years down the line almost. Um, what are you teaching over this next few few months? Because that would be really sort of good to know um, sort of where things are now. Yeah. Uh, so for the next few months, we are uh, introducing the kinetic control concept for the first time in Jordan and in India. Uh, no, it's not the first time in India, actually, but it will be our first time in India. The first time of course, of Prime, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And uh, of course, we are having like our maybe um, uh, 10th or 11th intake in Egypt. 
now, uh, joining HEBA uh, starting October in Kuwait. So it will be a uh, first time to visit that area also. Um, so Jordan, India, uh, Egypt, Bahrain, we are having the first uh, courses ever in Bahrain by the end of the day, me and Bahrain. Excellent. And it will be my first time also to visit Bahrain. Uh, plus our uh, ongoing mission to raise the awareness of the concept through giving uh, workshops whenever I do travel, like uh, I'm going to Dubai next to Pakistan. Uh, that's where I would be introducing the concept itself in different workshops. And we are having um, this Zoom sessions to introduce this concept uh, in Arabic. We call it uh, kind of a control in Arabic, but in our language. So we give the people like examples in Arabic, how this can make your practice different. And that's an ongoing project that I would say, yeah, it started to day back like one year before. And yeah, one more thing in Alexandria in Egypt, because we used to deliver our courses kind of to control only in one city, which is Cairo, the capital. We are going for the first time to introduce it in Alexandria, another city, and yeah. that is starting in uh, November. So it's I can see it's a busy day. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, there's um, real expansion. You mentioned sort of six or seven different territories there. Yeah. So that's that's excellent um, for for Prime for Kenneth Control for the tutor team as well. We're going to continue developing um, more broadly. Then, just as we sort of sort of start to round this up a little bit, um, where do you think if you sort of look sort of five years over the next sort of five years in terms of this type of approach and um, where physical therapy is going, um, what do you think things are going to look like in five years' time in terms of what? The physical therapy is going to be doing with their patients that's not an easy question to answer mm -hmm. because now things are changing like and in hourly manner not not just the daily but <laughs> and i can say yeah. especially yeah after the COVID time everything is going toward more of hands off and patient education in education using virtual reality and exercise so I would expect that the role of exercise and retraining to be bigger and bigger, grabbed by patient education, and to have more of uh, technology like software uh, introduced in our practice, and that we can help it uh, help, that can help us uh, hopefully to help our patients to reach the mindset even and uh, the body muscle memory whatever they would need to have better quality of uh, life, better health, less complain and less pain, of course. All right, so uh, a blend then of education and technology. Um, and I think that's certainly what we're seeing in a, in a lot of different realms, but certainly within this one as well, we would expect that to see that and a lot less hands-on, uh, only when it's needed. Um, and again, maybe sort of sitting within that sort of that clinical reasoning framework as and where. Okay, so perfect. So thank you ever so much for your time in terms of talking today. We've sort of learned a lot of excellent information there. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Lankland, for everything. That was a nice, like, bringing every member in that I really can enjoy now even better. So thank you, and thanks for everybody who's listening. Perfect. Thank you.